awesome wonders I've tasted of your power <laughs> Only share you You have shown me so much mercy Much more than I deserve Hello, welcome to Daily Boost. It's yours truly, Dr. Charles and Deepin here. I am so excited you've joined me today. We got the problem fixed, by the way, so you can hear the sound is clean, clear, and let me know. I want to wish some of my beautiful daughters today is their birthday. We have Lucy, Lucy, happy birthday, Lucy Glory, and we also have. Um, uh, our daughter Mariah, it's her birthday today, we celebrate them and uh, I want to welcome you, I see Pastor Laurie's already on board, so we are very excited that you've joined me today. So we are looking forward to a great day and we apologize for yesterday, we had some audio problems but it's fixed now, it's permanently fixed, so we can go ahead and bring you the best quality programming you can have, praise God. And we have Cook Henny. Praise God. <laughs> we have Donna. We have my dear friend, Warren. I love you, man. Uh, we have to do something together. We have Grace. We have, um, uh, if, I, if I don't call your name right now, just share with others. And I want to be talking to you about Awaken for Winning. You are a winner. You are a winner. The Bible says, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. He has given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness through the knowledge of Him. I love that. Hallelujah. So, I see heavenly, it's been a while. And just to let you know, we are going to be in Connecticut on the 26th. We're going to be in Connecticut for a wonderful one day, just a wonder meeting in Connecticut on the 26th of this month. So, you get ready. I see Prophet Frank Udo, you have your convention coming up. I believe it starts probably today. And congratulations on your second anniversary of the wonderful church in uh, New York City. And uh, we celebrate you. So we are going to be in Connecticut. And at the end of this month, beginning of next month, we are going to be in uh, Kenya. Hello, Kenya. Get ready for miracles. It's a love revolution invasion those of you that want to be part of a love revolution army you know what to do you go to love revolution army at christlove.org and you can send us the details there so kenya is from the second to the 16th we are going to be there for two full weeks you want you want to invite your family and your friends there hallelujah and uh, it is going to be glorious it's going to be glorious hallelujah Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> we are going to be actually, it, it's going to be, I think we are, instead of Connecticut, I think it's in Massachusetts. I want to make sure we get that straight. Okay. Praise God. 
It's going to be glorious. So we get all the details to you. And uh, those of you in Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, you need to get yourself over there on the 26th. So we are going to be in, um, we're going to be in Kenya. We're going to be in Nairobi and in Kisumu. You need to bring the sick, bring the dead and the dying and expect a miracle touch from heaven. Praise God. So I hope you enjoyed a bit of the music today. So I am very excited what God is going to do today. We have been talking about awaken, awaken for winning, to rise up and begin to win. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I have Dali. Uh, that's one of my daughters. And I believe in, uh, she's in either Maryland or New Jersey now. But praise God. I see Ernest is on there. Good. I see a lot of you. Pamela, God bless you. From Hamburg, Germany. So we are talking about awaken for winning. You were born to choose. No one was born to lose. You, you are a winner in life. Hallelujah. So I'm very excited. We can't we can wait to come to the different places. And uh, we are going to be in South Africa also. So you need, to, you need to get your calendar ready for next month. We're going to be in South Africa. And um, those of you in Johannesburg, get ready. It is going to be explosive. And then from South Africa, we're coming to Zimbabwe. It is going to be a love revolution. So Johannesburg, we are going to be there from the 26th to the 27th of September. So you get yourself ready. I am very excited today. I love all of you. <laughs> it is going to be a love revolution. We are expecting tens of thousands of people. Thank you for those that have been um, supporting this ministry. We appreciate you. Like I say to you, yesterday we had some issues with the sound. But um, thank God we're able to put all the new equipment, make sure we got those things working. At least you don't have to worry about that now. We have some better sound coming in. So we well, praise God. Welcome on board, all of you. I am talking about something good, something wonderful. Awaken for winning. Waking up, being awakened. Something on the inside of you being triggered to start winning. Do you know the Bible says that God causes you to triumph always. He says he causes us to triumph always. We are meant to be triumphant in everything we do. Do you realize that? You're called to be walking from victory to victory. God never planned any defeat for anybody. He never planned for anyone to be defeated. He planned you for success. Whatever God created, he created that to become successful. The Bible makes a statement that God does all things beautiful in his time. Whatever God does is beautiful. You are the object of love today. So get yourself ready and it's going to be a great week. We're starting going full force. I plan on sharing the whole message tomorrow and Friday. I want to make sure we can get everything in there as quickly as possible. Praise God. And I started on Monday. I talked about being constantly aware of human needs. Four great virtues I have learned. And I'm going to go and refresh and make sure you can get back from the beginning. I said that you are not a loser. You are a chooser. There are two categories of people in life. They are the losers and they are the choosers. They are those that are always whining and those that want to shine, that are always shining. They are people that, are, that re reject the abilities God has put in them. And they are others who respond to God's abilities in them. And you have the doers. They are those that are doing. And then you have the non-doers. Life separates these two groups. Life separates these two, two groups. Jesus said, some will say, but I, he says, but I will say, I never knew you. He said, some will say, but read the preface, the, the read before the, in context what I said. He said, it's not those that say, it's those that do. God is about doing. Saying does not guarantee that you've done it. In other words, God wants you to be awakened for winning. Go out there and see what God can do. God never fails and he wants to do tremendous things through you. So you get yourself ready. I am very excited because I know something amazing is taking place today. 
something amazing is taking place. Mm -hmm. God is coming to you in a fresh way and is coming to you with miracle life. He's coming to you with his life at work in you. You get ready. Hallelujah. So anyone can do the ordinary things. You can do the ordinary things. And yesterday I had a scripture from Matthew. It's a long one, but we're going to read it because I want to make sure that you get a hold of this. You're going to read this from Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. The Bible says, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all the nations, and he shall separate them one from the other, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. It's important. I'm talking about life. Two categories of people, according to the scriptures. Two categories of people. They are the, the, the doers and the non-doers. And here's what Jesus said. Verse 34. Then shall a king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, beloved of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. Do you know that God wants you to know that you have an inheritance in him? That inheritance requires your action. What we are doing right now is a foretaste, a preview of a more glorious encounter and flow in dominion. But God wants us to walk in dominion now, right now, because we have received that glory. The glory God gave him, he's given us. So I hope you're following what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being awakened for winning. What happens? It is so simple that most people go up to the mountains and they try so much to be very spiritual. But what God requires of us is so simple that anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. You see, when people don't understand how God operates, so people are seeking to be very spiritual, but God is seeking for practical people. This is what Jesus said. These are the words of Jesus. He says, Ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry. See, I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you took, the Bible says, and you gave me a drink. Very simple. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Oh, friends, this is what God wants to do. When you take your eyes off your troubles and put it on lifting others around you, you are awakened for winning. The Bible is so simple. People are looking for things. The thing that may be because you have to be very spiritual, you need to spend time with God. Let me explain to you. God is not interested in some of the things that we talk about. God is not interested in how many prophetic words you can give or you can receive. Although the prophetic words are good, God is a practical God. God wants us to become the expression of love in our world. Nothing too complicated. Anybody can do this. Anybody can do this. I know a lot of times people are wondering what it means to serve God. Is it a service or is it worship? What are we doing? We want to worship God, but God is looking for those that can serve. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I, this is going to cause you to come alive. I'm talking about awaken for winning. What will cause you? I have been, I, somebody once said to me, who are you to tell us this? Well, I have been to 87 countries. We have been to 87 country, countries. We have seen millions of people impacted. I think I know what woke me up, what uh, triggered something on the inside of me to go to the nations. And we are going to more nations this year. And we are, not, we are just starting out. We are still fresh. Hallelujah. And we are going to be going out to minister love that heals the people around us. 
Uh, we constantly, I told you about four virtues, four virtues that we need today. I said, you be constantly aware of the needs around you. Number two, have an abiding motivation to meet those needs. It's very simple. Have an abiding motivation to meet those needs. The third thing I said is have the spontaneous energy to get involved. When you start doing this, something on the inside of you comes alive. Nobody that has done this has not been awakened to win. If you can follow this, your life becomes extraordinary. It becomes extraordinary. Something amazing. As I'm speaking to you, sicknesses will fall off from your bodies because you are awakened for winning. You are awakened to win. You begin to see the pulsating life of God coming to you, coming through you to people and sickness runs away. Your bones become strong again. Your body becomes energized. Every part of your body begins to resonate and it begins to be moved with the life of God on every part of you. That's what God wants. God doesn't want you being all spiritual in the corner. He wants you full of life to take to people and minister love to them. Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. I'm talking about what will cause you to come alive. Some people say, I have my job. Yes, you can work and still do those things. Anybody can do this. This is what Jesus said. I'm going to read all of the scripture and then I'm going to talk to you about what will awaken you to win. What will stir up something in you that will cause you every day to have a winning attitude. And today I will give you five essential things that will help you become a winner in life. Hallelujah. Now, this is what Jesus said. I was a stranger and you took me in. I'm still reading from Matthew chapter 5. Uh, 25, I'm on uh, verse 35 now. It says, I was a stranger and you took me in. It says, I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Simple things that anybody can do. Anybody can do disordinary things but it's in the doing of this ordinary things that the extraordinary life of God is awakening you by doing these practical things that the extraordinary life of God begins to flow out of you some of us are looking to do something big for God but it starts with the very little things that is what awakens you to win. Uh, most times people are praying for months for God to use them mightily and they are looking to be very spiritual. I always smile. I tell them, go and get, get, go and, go and get somebody a glass of water. Go and love on somebody. Pay for somebody's meal. If you don't have money to pay, smile at somebody. You can open the door for somebody. It's simply service that awakens you to win. It is very simple. It is very simple. I want you to pay attention to this. See, a lot of times, I know a lot of Christians, we go to church, they tell you, they emphasize to you about you need to be spiritual. You need, do you know when you're too busy doing good, you don't have time to do the bad stuff? You will not have time of your day to go and do something stupid and crazy because Jesus went about doing good. He went about doing good. You can do that too. Ordinary things become extraordinary because love is what makes it extra. Because love is a key that makes every ordinary simple deed to become extraordinary a feat of glory. Hallelujah. I hope you're catching what I'm talking about. Anybody can do this because I hear some people say, I can do that because I need to be a pastor. I need to be. No, God is not interested in that. God does not put his premium on whether you have a title. He puts a premium on whether you can love the world around you. It's very simple. It's very simple. Hallelujah. Anybody can do this. See, I keep using that phrase over and over. Anybody can do this. This is what Jesus says. 
Verse 37, Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty, thirsty and give you a drink? And when, when did we see you a stranger and we took you in? When did we see you naked and clothed? Do you know that sometimes religious people have lost this? But that's our mission. Part of why God spoke to us about 100,000 people to become part of the Love Revolution Army is every nation, every nation, every tongue, every language, God is raising up people that are born of love. They can go out there and minister love in our world. They can do the simple things and they can see lives being transformed. And God was out working them both to will and to do of his good pleasures. Hallelujah. You see, anybody can do this. I see every day when I read the Love Revolution Army uh, on Power School of Miracles, I get excited because I see daily the wonderful things that all of you are doing. And I smile and I said, indeed, God can smile and said, I have my act together. I have you. Do you know that God can look around the world and see all the despair that people uh, are, are walking around with? God can look around. You see, God is in heaven with great ideas and great plans to make the world a better place. God has this tremendous ideas to make the world a better place. He sits in heaven and he looks around and sees the hurting people. With all the technology, all the riches we have in the world, we still have a world that people are hurting every single day. There is such division in the world, such discord among nations, amongst people people among brethren, among all kinds of people that you think ought to work together. Why? There is something missing. They need love again. Because when you have love, love does not seek its own. Love does not seek to hurt somebody else. You seek to make the other person better. Can you imagine, let's say in the United States, if the Democrats would say, what can I do to make the Republicans better? Or the Republicans can say, what can I do to make the Democrats? Instead of fighting at each other and trying to tear each other, they can say, come on, let's build something beautiful. How, the Bible says to prefer one another. People don't do that anymore. But these are things that anybody can do. Hallelujah. See, the reason why we're talking like this is in every nation, whether it's in Denmark, in Germany, in Kenya, in South Africa, if we can start, it begins with us. We are waiting for something big to happen. No, it begins with something awakening you. You are awakened for winning. When you begin to do this out in your world, see what happens with Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, what a beautiful woman. She went, she said, with three pens, I can love my world. Three pennies, I can love my world. She went to India and began to create a place where hurting people could come. It began with something awakened in her as a love army. Hallelujah. She started out something and the sisters of um, the, the, the charity, the sisters of mercy, the ministry has grown and has helped and healed the world around them. It takes a simple thing to be awakened when you look for a need and meet it. It's very simple. It's not that complicated. Today, we, we, we hear a lot of emphasis about people trying to be very spiritual, trying to be holy, to live a holy life. I don't want that kind of holiness that misses lifting people. That's the kind of holiness we're talking about, where we can touch the hurting people in the streets. We can touch our neighbors. We can touch our, our co-workers. We can touch this, the other co-students in school and can put a smile on their face. Let us begin with that action. The Bible says, this is Jesus. The righteous will say to him, when were you hungry and we fed you? Everybody wants to do things for Jesus. I remembered many years ago. We were in a meeting, Pastor Don and I we were sitting in a meeting and we were watching as the people are singing and adoring Jesus and they are worshiping God and people are weeping, oh Lord, you're so beautiful. We want to see your face. 
We want to see your face. The song goes like that. Lord, we want to see you. We want to see. And Pastor Donna just leaned over to me. She said something very profound. She said to me, people are singing. We want to see Jesus. She said, if you want to see Jesus, turn to your left, turn to your right. That's Jesus. Oh my God. What a profound revelation. Jesus in the, the person that is hungry. Jesus in the person that has a need. If we could see that, we can bring out the best out of people. Can you look beyond where they are? Can you look beyond their mistakes and redeem God's, God's dreams and people? We can do that. Anybody can do that. We are people lifters. That's what we're called to do. It's nothing that complicated. It's not how eloquent we are in speaking. It's not telling people they're going to get... They're going to go to heaven. It's being practical and ministering love. Do you know that's why in every nation we go to, one of the things I like to do, I like to go to the prisons. I, of course, sometimes we're invited by the government of those nations. But I always tell them, when I come there, of course, I'm going to minister to the government. I can speak in your parliament. That's wonderful. But also, I can, I can minister in the churches. But I like going to the jails. I like going to prison. I like going to the place where people have been discarded by society. I like going to the mental hospital. I like going to places that people don't want to go. I love to go to the hospital. I love, I remember in, in Bolivia. We went to the women's prison and miracles everywhere. Marvelous, marvelous miracles. They were taught miracles after miracles that we saw. We went to the male prison and miracles after miracles. Wonderful. Jesus in, in prison. People hurting. And I preached to them. I told them, you might be behind the prison walls. But Jesus has come to give you freedom on the inside. I said, there are a lot of people outside those walls. They are free on the outside, but they are in prison on the inside. But the greatest jail you can ever be is to become a prisoner on the inside. Because nobody else can make you free until you choose the good news that will make you free. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The truth that comes it was, is what unlocks you to be free. So I told them, I said, there is peace for the war that's on the inside of you. And this man sing the miracles, gave their hearts to Jesus, and it was amazing. It was just glorious. It was just amazing. I love that. We have been doing this for years. I remember in Mongolia, uh, of course, those of you that have seen the Seat Rot program with me many years ago, we did two television programs with Seat Rot, and then we also did... Um, five radio broadcasts with Sid. And one of the things that happened, what he was talking about, was when we went to the prison in Mongolia, and uh, they had a different gang. This was the worst prison in the country. When we went there, this man were in different gangs, and they were kind of, they thought I was <laughs> exotic, you know, <laughs> I'm coming from heaven, you know, not Africa, heaven. <laughs> they thought I was a little uh, exotic. So here I was, I came into the prison with my team from Australia, from Germany, from Switzerland, and uh, also from uh, different parts of the world that came with me. And uh, the people were kind of snickering. They, were, they thought I looked very interesting. I guess I was probably the, the only uh, person of African descent that ever seen in their lives. So I kind of looked a little more exotic, you know, <laughs> born with a natural tan. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, so guess what happened? We came in there and uh, the people didn't want to listen to me in the different gangs and in different places. Do you know what I did? I say to them, I've come with good news for all of you. This was in, in the worst jail in the country. I said, I've come with good news from heaven. And the people are looking at me like, who is this guy? Guess what happened? In no time, I say to them, nobody believes my message until it is demonstrated. I said, is there anybody deaf here? 
And immediately they pushed a man that came to the... I'm, I'm going to put some of those pictures up today so that you see what I'm talking about. They pushed a man forward to come and, you know, this man was beaten in prison until his eardrums were busted. So he, he was completely stone deaf, could not hear anything. And this man was sitting there. He was standing there and they, they, they uh, brought him to the front in, th in this prison. I'm talking about awaken for winning. This man was say, you know, standing there and they pushed him forward. And I said to them, don't believe this message until you see it demonstrated. Our gospel comes in power, not in word only. It comes in a full assurance of the Holy Ghost. And guess what happened? It was glorious. This, this uh, man was pushed. I'll put the pictures later. This man was pushed forward. And you see all his gang members just looking to see what was going to happen. Five miracles later, this man was instantaneously healed. His deaf ears instantaneously opened. And this man was just amazed. You could see him with his, his, his eyes glowing, his finger in his ear. He could hear very clearly. And the place broke open. I came to the prison because Jesus was locked up in people. Jesus was locked up. God's dream was locked up in people in prison that needed a messenger of love to go and unlock that. Hallelujah. That is our message. That is what I learned from my spiritual father, Dr. T.L. Osmond, ministering love that heals people around you. That's our mission. That's why we have the Love Revolution Army. And it is exciting what God is doing today. Awaken for winning. What wakes you up? What causes that trigger on the ins inside of you? The Bible makes a statement. It said, awake ye that slumber. You that are sleeping, wake up. There is purpose for living. There is a new reason for being. There, the life is not just going through the, what the society has told you. There is another dimension of living that is available to you today if you can dare to step into it. I gave you four virtues. Number one, be constantly aware of human needs. Number two, have an abiding motivation to meet that need. You don't have to do a lot. You don't have to build a stadium. You can just build a person with your words. I'm talking about what winners do. Awaken for winning. Anybody can do that. Here is Jesus speaking to us. He tells us this. I, I, I believe that this is important. I see Dr. Richard. Welcome on board. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see Kitty. Bless you, city. Love you. Now, this is Jesus speaking. And uh, the, the righteous were asking, Lord, when did we... Lord, when did we see you hungry and fed you? When did we see you thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and gave you something to eat and took you in, or naked and clothed you? Or when, so, or when did we see you sick or in prison and came to you? Friends, do you know all it takes? It's a touch. Or a smile. You don't have to know all the scriptures. You just have to become the scriptures that you know. Can I say that one more time? You don't have to know all the scriptures. You just have to become the scripture that you know. I think that's profound. Don't know every scripture. Just become the scripture that you know. That's all the world wants to see. They want to see a person that has become love that they talk about and they can reach out to people without condemning them. I said four virtues. Be constantly aware of the needs around you, of human needs. Number two, have an abiding motivation to meet that need. To meet that need. Don't say that I can't do it. Yes, you can do anything because God is energizing you. Number three, have the spontaneous energy. Don't think, just move. Jesus, we read the other day, he was moved with compassion for the people. He was moved with compassion for the people. And that is the key that unlocks winning in you. Awaken for winning. It's very simple. And the fourth thing I mentioned is have the quiet patience. 
when you're helping the people to be non-critical because religion loves to be critical religion if they're extending help to you they put some caveat to it and they will tell you well you know if you didn't do this you wouldn't have had this no, you don't tell a man drowning why why they're drowning they know they're drowning all they need is some good news that can lift them and bring them life again that's all they need you don't tell a sick person you're sick look at you if you had done this they need healing they just want to get well you don't tell a sinner you're sinning they know it they want to hear some good news of how your Jesus can lift them out of it and anybody can do this anybody can do this you can do it why because you my friend are extraordinary you are extraordinary you are more than who you think you are you are extraordinary hallelujah did you realize you are a unique individual do you know the how unique you are there is no person in the world like you do you realize that do you know that God made you special just the way you are you said but I can't do anything I, I I didn't go to Bible school no you don't have to go to Bible school you just have to you have to become the Bible and go out and let people read you and you become the school for them to see love in action it's not that complicated I wish the the believers the churches can be activated instead of us coming just to meet and have a nice little kumbaya meeting we can go after those meetings to our communities and call on our neighbors and help them and cut their lawns or bake a cake and go out and 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 share it with them do something beautiful for somebody go out and look for hurting people if we can do something that great giant called the church the kingdom motion machine will come alive and we can reach the world quickly and we can wrap all of these things and we can go home hallelujah this is what I'm talking about we are extraordinary people we come from heaven doing what we do is not something extraordinary it is ordinary because we are already extraordinary you are extraordinary so what you do as an extraordinary being is ordinary to you but extraordinary to the world you are extraordinary what you do it's already extraordinary but to you it's normal God does not see miracles whatever he does is miraculous to others to God it is normal do you realize that do you know Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says you are his masterpiece you are created in Christ Jesus for good works that God has ordained that you walk in he is ordained for you to walk in this I hope this is helping somebody today because you are just the fragrance of love wherever you go that's simple now people say oh well you don't understand it. <laughs> you don't understand what I'm going through for virtue that can help you win be constantly aware I'm talking about awaken for winning awaken for winning you can do this you don't say well you know I have my kids you can carry your kids on the way and do the thing it's not something you have you have to plan like 10 days to do it <laughs> you know how a lot of times we Christians want over plan things just have the spontaneous energy to get involved spontaneous energy spontaneity you go out there and just let love flow out of you just go and help somebody hallelujah I like doing things like that just go out one one day I I went out to um, the um, to we went out shopping we went to get some groceries and things and we saw some little girls selling the Girl Scout cookies and they're getting ready for the summer uh, camp but they needed some money so they have this Girl Scout cookie they sell in the United States for those that are outside the United States I don't know whether they do the same thing they sell this Girl Scout like the Boy Scout the Girl Scout cookies they sell those cookies to raise money so that those young girls can take the money raised to go to camp it's a good way to train them how to earn things and so when I was going into the store with our international director uh, Princess Reka we were going in to get some things we saw this little girls 
And I could see them, they're trying to get people to buy their things. And people just walking and ignoring them and working. And all I could think about is, I thank you, Lord, for giving such a great opportunity for us to shine. Simple. What did I do? I just went over to them. They had a box of this thing that they had to sell to raise the money. And I went there and I said to them, how much is it? Oh, it is uh, $3. I said, for the whole box? They look shocked. These little girls just look so shocked. You mean you want to buy the whole box? I just said, calculating, and I could smile. You know what I, could, I thought about? I don't want to be in a place where I cannot help make people's dreams happen. I have to become so endowed with so much goodness that when I get out there, I can make dreams happen. Hallelujah. But I know God has invested a lot in me. You begin to understand that the first thing you want to do is you have to realize you are unique. Individualize yourself. Then you have to understand what it means to celebrate the responsibility. One thing people sometimes have a problem is, how do I start? You can re-begin. There are some people that have made mistakes and said, well, I tried before people took advantage of me. Friends, don't let that stop you. Get back there and you can re-begin. You can re-begin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, when I'm talking to you like this, you see, don't get caught up with this. Like I said, sometimes in the churches, we get caught up with, we want to know, can I prophesy? That's the lifestyle of the believer. You don't have to struggle with that. Let me finish the story with the Girl Scout. And they started calculating. They calculated how much it was going to cost to get all of these this cookies. And they told me, I said, give me the whole box. They were just, you could see their, their eyes was just glimmering. It's the joy. They were, they, oh, thank you, thank you. And I said, Mommy, this man just bought everything. I said, now you can go and get ready for camp. <laughs> I bought the whole thing. To tell the truth, I'm not really into those kind of cookies and sweets. You know what I did? I bought it and took it to people that like those things. And those little girls got excited and we made their dreams come true. Do you know you can do that for people? Jesus was saying, he says, I was hungry, you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was homeless, you took me in. Some people, can you believe when I came to the United States? Some of the Christians that discouraged us because we were living in a one-room place. It wasn't a big place. It was just one room. And, you know, people don't understand that we have come. We, we can tell you stories of how God raised us up. Hallelujah. See, we were still taking people when we had nothing. We had nothing. We we're still bringing homeless people home. And I heard some of the Christians say, be careful. You don't bring those people. They can steal from you. They can do it. We had nothing for them to steal anyway. We had a little TV and things from college. And that was it. It wasn't a big deal. You know, we weren't thinking like that. We had a different way of thinking. Hallelujah. We brought those people and we will minister to them. And I heard people say, well, you know, brother, you have to be careful. You know, some criminals will come. And all I could think about is, I'm light. When did light start being afraid of the darkness? When did light start being concerned about the thoughts of the dark? I'm not afraid of the devil. We are not ignorant of his devices. Show them such kindness. Show them love. They cannot deny that God loves them. Let them say all the negative things. Of course, most of them, they'll start saying some negative things. They have been hurt by religion, but not by Jesus. Let's reach out to them and let's minister love to them. Hallelujah. Believe you can rebegin. The next thing is realize, identify Jesus in people. I'm talking about how do we move this forward? How can you move this forward? Five choices that winners always have. I'm going to go through it again. Number one, know that you're unique. You're not a copy of anybody else. Even when religion is trying to make a clone out of you, break free from that religion. I used to remember those days, you know, uh, when Apple Computer came out with a commercial. I think that was back in 1984. They came over a commercial, and the commercial was how IBM was the, was the industry with everybody like a clone. Those days you used to make PC or personal computer clones. 
But when Apple came, Apple decided not to be a clone. They decided to become different with a different operating system. They had a different operating system. Guess what happened? And the commercial was basically breaking free from being a clone. The first thing you do if you are going to become a winner in life, five choices you're going to make. Number one, you have to individualize yourself. You got to realize you are unique, one of a kind. There is nobody like you. God has called you for something extraordinary. God wants you. He has a unique purpose for your life. Believe that. I keep telling people, stop comparing yourself with others. I don't compare myself with anybody else. I am one of a kind in the whole world. Nobody like me. I like that. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm an original. I would not end up being a clone. <laughs> you are a masterpiece. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 10, you are a masterpiece. You are created for good works. The only thing that we all will look alike is we look like love. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about today? We look like love. You look like love. That's our, that's, that's our resemblance. That's how we look. We don't want people to say you're black, you're white, you're Asian, you're this, you're... No, it makes no difference. They should just see love when they see you. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I am talking about ministering love that heals a hurting world. We are awakened for winning. Five Choices that winners make. Number one, number one, you are unique. Realize you are unique and do not become a clone. Become the sweet person you are. Don't let religion get to you and let them try to make you very spiritual. Be practical. Jesus is teaching. He said, anybody can do that. He said, this is what he says. Verse 39. Or you saw me sick or in prison and you came on to me. Verse 40 says, Matthew 25 verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of this, my brethren, you have done it for me. You have done it for me. If you can do it to the least of the people. You see, sometimes over the years, People have criticized me because I seem to take people that people don't want. People that have been down, that have been criticized, people that have made mistakes. And I take them and we love on them and we build them back up and they become amazing ministers. And I hear the religious people always saying to me, well, you know, you have to be concerned about that brother because he has this, that, that, that. And I just said, I refuse to be part of that clique that would want to crucify a brother or a sister that has made a mistake. I, I am an individual, so I individualize myself. I am unique. I am not part of those that want to throw the first stone. I refuse to be part of that. And they said, well, you know, we, the ministers, you know, have agreed. I said, agreed on what? If you do not agree on the word of God, I apologize because I am not going to be part of it. I'm not going to hurt those that are already down. I want to lift them up and put them in a place where they can walk in victory. When a man or woman of God or uh, a, a person has made a mistake, sometimes when I go to jail, the people in jail, they look at me and they say, but you, you've never been in jail. Um, why do you care so much about us? I said, I don't care about your mistakes. You already made it. All I care about is I have come so that we can redeem God's dreams that is still in you. A penny, a penny, uh, a one cent that is on the ground, run over by cars, still has the same value as a brand new penny from the bank. People are precious. I said five choices that winners do. Number one, they, they discover they, they decide, I am unique. Number two, they celebrate responsibility. I'm going to be talking about that tomorrow, what it means to celebrate responsibility. They celebrate responsibility. 
What did they do? They, they learned how to respond to God's abilities in them. Number three, they believe they can start over again. Do you believe you can start over again? I always tell people, put me in the desert, I can build a city. God is working in me. I, I, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm going to look for creative things because I believe that God has put his very best on the inside of me. Number four, if you want to be awakened for winning, you make these five choices. Number four, identify Jesus in people. The hungry people. I was telling the story of Pastor Donna when she made that statement. She said, we want to see Jesus. Let's look left and right. They are in church singing, Lord, we want to see your face. We want to behold you. We want to love you. And she just turned to me very profoundly and she said, if you want to see Jesus, look at the neighbor around you. That's Jesus. Look at the person that is hurting. Look at the drug addict that is there. Do you know in that same church, I came there to minister once. When I walked in, there were some young ladies. This was in um, Montour Falls in, in um, upstate New York, in the state of New York. That was many years ago. So we were ministering in this church. And so there were some young ladies on the back, high school uh, kids, um, young ladies. They were kind of snickering in the back, just kind of laughing and carrying on and kind of being a little disruptive to the service. <laughs> it was interesting. <laughs> so I guess they were used to preachers and uh, I, maybe their parents brought them to church. You know what happened? I just said, two of you in the back come forward. <laughs> and they were kind of smiling and just like, oh, okay, the preacher wants to talk to us. As they came forward, I just looked at them and I just began to read their mail. For those that don't understand what that means, meant I, the Holy Spirit opened them up like a book to me. I told them what they did yesterday. I told them what the problems were they were going through. And as I was speaking, both of them hit the ground. Nobody touched them. They hit the ground so hard under the glory of the weight of the glory of God's love. They fell on their faces and began to weep. They began to weep and weep and weep and weep and they were radically transformed by love. They were awakened to win. Guess what happened? We came back to that church three months later and uh, they told us, remember those two ladies? He said, one of them is already a missionary around the world. I said, I'm liking this. I said, are you serious? They said, yes. She, after that day, she made up her mind. She was awakened for winning. She made up her mind that she was going to go and help others too. Anybody can do this. You don't have to have a church to do this. You just have to have a heart. You have to see Number four, identify Jesus in people. That includes the crazy guy that's all mad at everybody. See beyond all of their facade. Look and see Jesus. Identify Jesus in people. And the last thing, number five, remove every excuse you build up not to do this. Remove every excuse. Hello, Sharon. Sharon, can you tell us the address of your church that we are coming on the 26th? Give us the address. Let the people know where we're going to be. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do you know when, when you remove excuses, there's a syndrome called excuses in the church. Take that out and see what God can do. You are amazing. You see, one of the things I find out in the church is People always overlook what the scripture says. You see, there are three questions when people are talking about things, about how you can celebrate responsibility. What is it? Number one, first question, choosing the positive of being glad and connected with God. The first question you have is, what does that mean to celebrate responsibility? I will talk about those three tomorrow and I'll give you some other points, but I want you to remove 
every excuse you've had not to reach out to people. People say, I don't have the money. I don't have this. You don't need money to help people. You just need to be there and help them. I remember there was a young lady when we came newly into Rhode Island many years ago. And of course, the young lady knew we travel around the world, but she was caught up in addiction. And every time she needed something, she would call us. Hallelujah. She would call us. And we would go there. We'd see the needles and everything and the weather where all kinds of drug paraphernalia was kind of all over the place. And you know what happened? Pastor Dan and I just had compassion on her and helped her and loved on her. We never condemned her. And our, she's been kicked off from so many churches. She just is struggling. And all we did was beautiful Joanne. I love her so much. And Joanne was delivered. And guess what happened? Started coming to church. She started the ministry. And her ministry was called the Midnight Hour. What does she do? She would go out to the street in the middle of the night. All those girls that would be in, caught up in, uh, maybe held up by pimps and all kinds of things, sh shooting drugs and things, all kinds of things. She would go out in the middle of the night, helping them, giving them things, some sanitary towels and all kinds of things, ministering love to them because we cared enough and God started using her. We don't put all those things on Facebook or then we didn't have Facebook. We don't put those things on our website. No, this is what love does. We are awakened for winning. She was awakened to win. It is very simple. Very, very simple. Nothing complicated. Anybody can do that. Jesus was speaking. Let me read the rest of it. It is so beautiful when I read this. Verse 41 of Matthew chapter 25. Then shall I sit unto them on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. I was naked, you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Then the Lord, they shall answer and say, Lord, when did you hunger or thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and will not minister unto you? Then shall he answer and says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, inasmuch as you did, you did it not to one of the least of these people, you did not do it unto me. Do you want to serve God? Serve people. Serve the vision of people that are helping others. You can become part of this love revolution army. You can become part of something incredible. And right now, God is doing something new with some of you. Some of you are awakened. You're saying, Lord, how can I do this? I have so many responsibilities. What did I say? You remove the excuse syndrome. Remove it. No excuses today. All you have to do is make yourself available. And God has all the abilities that he can put in you to bring life to people around you. That's all you have to do. You just have to get up there and start doing some amazing things. So we are going to be on the 26th. We're going to be in the Celestial Praise Church of God. 321 Will, Will Bran, uh, Branham Road, Springfield, Massachusetts. That's where we're going to be. August 26th and the services. I believe that Sharon has put that up. The services will be at 10 a.m. and at 6 p.m. Just one day. What a great opportunity for those of you in New York, in Connecticut, in Massachusetts to come in there and be part of something amazing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is healing somebody. You have a breathing problem. God is healing you completely. I see somebody. You have a knee condition. God is healing you. Another person, you've been having a problem sleeping. Tonight, you're going to sleep like a baby. You're going to sleep like a baby. I see another person, you've been having this chest pain. That pain is gone. Another person, I see, they, they gave you a bad report from the doctors. God is healing you completely. Somebody with migraine headache, the migraine just left you completely. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody, you've been, you've, been, you've been waiting for money to be released to you. That money is coming to you. It's released today in Jesus' name. The case is being changed. There are no more delays in your life. So get ready for something extraordinary. God is doing something new with you. You are awakened. 
you are awake. And today, remember what I said? I said I give you four virtues from Monday. Uh, first thing is be constantly aware of human needs. Number two, have an abiding motivation to meet those needs. Number three, have the spontaneous energy. Spontaneity. Have that energy to get involved. Don't postpone it. You miss an opportunity. I can tell you a story. What happened to me many years ago. I was in Benin City where the great bands in the halls had a church. And I was rushing to go to the meeting. Because my father, Dr. T. Osborne, was in town. So I had gotten myself ready. And I was going to go to the meeting. And I saw this, this person that was crippled on the start of the street. And a kind of moving on his hunches, basically, and it was a lady, and I said, okay, you know what, I'm, I don't want to miss the meeting, I want to rush to the meeting. I ran, got on the bus to try to get the meeting, I was a teenager at the time, and guess what happened? We had a great meeting with Dr. Teal Osborne, our lives were transformed, guess what happened? And I came back in this popular place that all the cripple, and I spent two hours looking for this woman looking for this woman, and I never saw her the rest of my life. I haven't seen her till today. She just disappeared. And all I could think about when I was thinking about this, the spontaneous energy to get involved immediately. Guess what happened? I was too busy trying to get to a meeting that blessed me, but I missed an opportunity to minister love to people. And after that, I said, that will never happen. Every opportunity I have from then on, I said, I'm going to go for it. I have the spontaneous energy to get involved. And when you're helping people, have the quiet patience. Not to be critical of them. You know how religious people are. They love to be critical. They love to tell you how wrong you are. How many times you've made your big mistake, your big boo-boo, like they say in America. You know, and they'll tell you all kinds of things. You see, the fourth thing is, have the quiet patience to be non-critical. Don't become critical. When you're helping people, don't become critical. Don't become like the Pharisees, oh, we're going to help you, you know, you know, you, you'll be beholden to us. Don't do that. Just help them. Even if they don't know your name, just tell them, don't worry about it. God has you covered. They just want to see Jesus in a person. Hallelujah. We can do this. Hallelujah. And I'm looking at some people here. Alfred Owen, I curse that condition that has been upon your life. I rebuke that spirit be gone in the name of Jesus. Be healed now. You get up and run in the name of Jesus. Alfred, you go and do it right now. Check yourself. You are free. Tap your head. Check yourself. You are free now. Get up and do it in the name of Jesus. You're free. Don't ask for prayer. Ask for a miracle. And you have the miracle. Hallelujah. Go ahead and check your body. That spirit has left you in the name of of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I rebuke every sickness in your body. You get up and walk if you cannot walk right now. Whatever you cannot do, just do it right now. Just get, up, get away from that place and start living again. Become awakened and you start winning again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, what a day. It went very fast. You know I love you. I can't wait to tell you. I gave you five choices. I will be running all through those five choices. The next couple of days, tomorrow, I will talk about how can you celebrate your responsibility. Again, those of you that want to be part of the Love Revolution Army, I want you to send a mail to loverevolutionarmy at christlove.org and be part of that. And thank you. You people have been amazing been amazing. Don't forget also, I want you to wish some of our daughters, uh, we have our daughter, we have Lucy, she has a birthday today, and uh, you people let me know when your birthdays come so that I can acknowledge you. I want you to know you are important to me. And uh, we have Mariah and uh, Lucy, uh, those are the two names I know that they have a birthday today. This is my two daughters I know. And if you have a birthday and I don't know about it, I just want to wish you a ha happy birthday today. You know we love you and we're praying for you guys. You matter to us. And uh, Thank you for your continuous support. You have been making this message come alive. You see, every time, yesterday we had a, a little issue with some of the equipment. Guess what? 
it's working very well today. Diligence pays off. A little hiccup will not stop you from receiving the best God has for you. Praise God. I want to say I love all of you so dearly. Hallelujah. Start winning again. Thank you, Pastor Laurie. And we have Austin. I love you. I miss you. Hey, Austin, don't forget to join the Love Revolution Army on Facebook and also the, on Messenger, Love Revolution Power School of Miracles, Love Revolution Army. Share your testimonies of what God is doing and uh, encourage each other. There has been such joy to see all the wonderful things that God is doing. I say, I love you, Myra. We love you and we miss you. you got to be part of that. Hallelujah. Um, Claudine, love you plenty. Love you plenty. Love you very, very much. And please let us know what God is doing with you. Tomorrow we're coming back. I want to also, as, as we always do, for some of you, some people have been asking that, that they cannot send. If you want to send us a gift to support the ministry, you can go to face, uh, to um, um, christlove.org and click the donate button. Or you can go just write Dr. Charles N. D. Fun, P.O. Box 72800. Um, Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. Send us your mail. Send us your prayer request. We're going to be doing some great things. And tomorrow afternoon, we have Q&A. So you get yourself ready. We are rolling now, and greater things are happening. I want to say again, thank you very, very much, Frida and Alexander and Lewis and Apostle Mulber and Dabas. Love you all the way from Abuja. I love you. I love you. I love you. I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. It's going to be another glorious day with Jesus. Amen. Let me know. Share it. Pamela, God bless you. Love you. Love all of you. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow. God bless you.